and welcome to chapter three. In this chapter, we're going to talk about the reasons why people engage in unethical behavior, and we're going to discuss moral relativism. Let's get started. People engage in unethical behaviors in the workplace for a number of reasons, and perhaps the most significant reason is that they're just simply unaware that their behaviors were inappropriate. They didn't receive proper communication from management or from HR that they shouldn't be engaging or in certain behaviors or conducting some type of certain conduct. Other reasons why people engage in unethical behavior is because of cultural differences. Some cultures interpret actions as acceptable while other cultures may not. And also people have different value systems. So individuals who are raised up in different families or come from different schools may have been taught different different beliefs and have different values and in some certain circumstances the actions that result from those differences may result in unethical behavior. This can be generally dealt with within organizations by creating a code of conduct which many corporations do which illustrates correct behavior or acceptable behavior within the organization and behavior that's not acceptable. Now the idea of moral relativism also plays a role in here. Moral relativism claims that morality is relative and uh, that it differs from person to person and that in fact it can be different from situation to situation. Moral relativism gives the freedom and flexibility of determining what's right or correct or moral to be relevant to the particular person, situation, or set of activities that are taking place. So in one culture, for example, items, act, certain actions may be moral and other actions may be immoral. Um, certain, a person may grow up with a certain set of beliefs and they say, hey, this belief works for me, therefore it's moral to me. It doesn't work for you, therefore it's not moral to you if you were to engage in the same behavior. As you can see, this concept of moral relativism is quite troubling and it can lead to a number of different problems. In fact, some people say that if moral relativism were really true and everyone in society acted on that belief, what's, what works for me works for me and what works for you works for you and no one is qualified to question the morality or the correctness of, of anyone's actions, then society would simply descend into chaos. And the person who has the biggest gun would essentially be the winner and they would then begin to dictate what is correct behavior and what's incorrect behavior to those people who are weaker. Thank goodness we don't live in a society like that. So let's talk about moral relativism for what it is. It's actually a way that people use to justify behaviors that are inappropriate. And that there is, we argue, a greater sense of right or wrong that does exist in the universe and that does exist in business, certainly within society and organizations, as society and organizations have rules and laws that they've chosen to govern themselves by. The most basic form of relativism is what's called naive relativism. And what naive relativism claims is that uh, there's no absolute set of truth. There's nothing, there's no absolute set of right or wrong that exists. That in fact, I do what's right for me as my values outline and you do what's right for you as your value system outlines. And because we're sticking with our own true values, then our actions are inherently moral to each his own. And who am I to judge? So you can see the danger in, in that perspective. For example, one person may feel that it's completely okay, given how they were raised, to assault and harm somebody else. Another person watching may say, well, he was raised that way, to each his own. And for him, that's completely moral behavior. To me, it's not, therefore I should never engage in it, but I won't do anything to stop or protect someone else from being victimized. When you think about this, what about the person who was a victim in their perspective? Surely they didn't sign up to be victimized or hurt. Where does their sense of morality or relativism come into play? See, this is the danger with naive uh, relativism, or, and actually all forms of relativism, is that you have those that are perpetrating and those that are on the receiving end of it, whose definition of morality is correct. And because we all have to interact with each other, we have to understand that uh, our moral, uh, what we consider to be moral actions and this impact on other people it all ties in together and there needs to be some type of guiding force or setting guidelines. Here's another form of relativism. We call this role relativism. And what this argues is that based on the particular role that someone holds in society or within a group or something like that, they're actually subject to different um, moral leeway than other people. Most famously, the Stanford Prison Experiment, which you see a picture of here, was conducted and illustrated this concept. 
the students in this case, all everyone who participated in the study were students. Some were randomly selected to be guards. Some were randomly selected to be prisoners. And once they were in the prison environment and the study began to start, those guards who uh, they began to act differently because they felt that the role that they were in gave them the permission and to, to do so. And there was expectations to behave in a certain manner. So they began to be very aggressive, very demeaning to the people who were prisoners. Likewise, the people who were prisoners embraced the role that they were in and they began to act in more of a docile manner. There were a couple of them that, that took on the role or persona of being more deviant and challenging authority, while others simply remained very docile and followed instructions. We could talk about this more in class. I encourage you to look this up on Google and watch a couple of videos about it to understand exactly what went, went in the study. Needless to say, the study went so bad in terms of how people engaged in their roles and the way they treated one another that it had to be canceled early and many of the people in the study had to receive psychological treatment. Next we're going to talk about group relativism, social group relativism. And what this says is that, hey, I could behave a certain way or engage in certain moral behavior because that's the social group that I'm part of. This is part of my group that I identify with. Therefore, it's okay for us to do it. It may not be okay for you and your group to do it because you guys have different set of rules or norms. But for me and my group, it's okay. So it's okay for me and my group to say um, harm somebody else or perhaps one of the, the greatest or easiest examples to look at would be a fraternity who goes through hazing practices and they abuse other people. They assault other people as they're joining the fraternity. And this is some form of you know, proving that you're worthy to be in, this, in, in, this, in the fraternity or sorority. Under any normal circumstances, that would be considered assault. You'd be able to go to jail. But people feel justified in their behavior because they're part of this group. And this is just what we do. So therefore, engaging in this behavior is acceptable because of the group or the social group that I'm part of. Another form of, of uh, more relativism is cultural relativism. A lot of people make justifications for their behavior based on their culture. Well, in my culture, it's okay to engage in uh, abusiveness to women. Or in my culture, it's okay to engage in XYZ activity. In your culture, it may not. Who are you to judge my culture? Who are you to tell me that my culture is somehow wrong? And the idea of this is still unacceptable. It's still a form of relativism, no matter how you slice it or explain it. Inappropriate behavior is simply put that inappropriate behavior. And it shouldn't be accepted whether it's justified by a person's role by their culture or any other form of justification. That wraps it up for this chapter. We're talking about moral relativism. Thank you, and as always, don't forget to study. We'll see you later.